Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is a tutorial on building a projectile shooter 2D game in C++ using SDL library. I will be demonstrating how to install, setup and run SDL in both Visual Studio and also Visual Studio code. If you are using any other code editors like Sublime Text etc, the VS Code setup will work on those too. We will be using object oriented programming for this tutorial. So let's start the video with the final demo of the game that we are going to build. So this is going to be the final demo of the app. There is a home screen and there is a text saying click to play and the score is also shown. When we click on the left mouse button the game starts and we have enemies coming. And we can, when we click on the left mouse button we can shoot projectiles and there is a particle effect for when the projectile hits the enemy and also whenever the projectile is created. Now when the enemy and the uh, player collides with the game overs and there is a score is shown in here. So this is going to be the game that we are go that this is the game that we are going to build. Because we are using SDL, we need to first install it. So go into the browser and search for SDL. Go into the Simple Direct Media Layer website, which is the SDL's website. Now go into the releases section in the download section. Because I'm going to demonstrate in both Visual Studio Code and also Visual Studio, I will download this minjw.tar.js which is for the visual studio code and this vc.zip for the visual studio so whichever device, uh, whichever software you are using you can download that one only now go into the location where everything is downloaded and we will extract both of them okay now everything is extracted and i will delete the zip files now we have two of these now we'll go into i will copy uh, go into the minjw folder and then I I'm using this I'm using 64 bit computer so I will use this 86 underscore 64 if you are using a 32 bit you can use this one when you go into this and we need this stl 2dll copy that copy that and paste in here for now and then we want this include folder and also this lib folder so I'll just copy both of them and this stl to dll control c and then go into location where it is where you can use it for other purposes other uh, projects also i will go into uh, in here and i will just create a new folder in here stl vs code and i will just paste it in here now we will go into the same location again downloads again and into the visual studio folder and we want this lib and include folder only okay in the lib we only need the 64 bit but i'm just going to copy the whole lib and include and again come into a safe location so that you can use for other projects and i will create a new folder in there called sdl visual studio and i will paste it inside this now for this one is for the visual studio code only i will create a new project now we are in the project location so i will create a new folder in here called assets and then go into the uh, folder where we just copied the files i will just go into this sdlvs code and copy all of these and i will paste it in the assets folder from the lib folder we don't want this cmake and package config so i will delete those and then there is this include folder which everything is required and this dln should not be in here so i will cut that and paste it in the root of the project i will create a new folder in here called code where every code will be the code will be done in this code folder now we can go into visual studio code and just open the project folder now we have something like this <laughs> we have something like this now in the code i will create a new file called main.cpp and i will just put a normal c++ code just to check whether everything is working i will also include stl.h for this one and then need to pass in in the argc and also because we are using sdl we need to do this we need to pass in the command line arguments which are in the argc and character pointer argv array so this is required for stl to work i will just return zero for now and we need to check whether this works fine but we need a we need a command to compile our 
C++ file. So I will create a new file in the assets folder called commands.txt. And in there I will put a command to compile uh, this main.cpp into an executable. So first we are using G++ or MinGW so I pass in G++. We need to include the assets folder. I mean the include folder in the assets. So assets slash include the path to the include folder. And we need the libraries libs fold lib folder assets slash lib. And then the name of the C++ file is main.cpp and it is in the code folder. So code slash main.cpp. Then an uh, hyphen o and then the name of the executable. I want the executable to be program.txe so I'm just passing in program. And then because we are using SDL, we need to pass in some libraries also. So my uh, hyphen L min GW, we need min GW to run uh, for this to compile. And then we need SDL to main, SDL to main, and also SDL to. These are the files that we require to run uh, to compile it. Now I'll just copy this, come into the terminal. Then we just paste that compiling command in the terminal and hope for the best. Okay, now everything is working fine. A program.exe is generated. Let's check. Okay, it's running also. That means the STL Visual Studio code setup is done. Now we need to set up for Visual Studio. Take Visual Studio and create a new project. It will be an empty project. And I will place the solution and the project in the same directory itself. And click on create to create the project. And now the project is created and then you should do this in the source file. I will create a new item called main.cpp. If you create this main.cpp only, the next things will work. So now just go into the project tail, click on this project tail shooter. Right click on the mouse and go into properties. You're going to the project properties, or you can just click on this project and go into the properties. I'll just go into that project tail shooter properties. And then we'll go into the C C slash C section and into the additional include directories. Click on that and add a new one. And we need to give the path to our include folder location where we have the include folder. It's in the STL Vision Studio. And this include folder is what we are including. Now we have included that. Now go into the linger section. And then there is this additional library directories. Just copy that. Create a new one. And again, we'll go into the same location. STL Visual Studio and this time we will uh, give the location of the lib and because I am using a 64 bit computer I will copy this if you are using 32 just copy this just uh, select that now I will select that folder 64 folder and select the folder now go into the input section of the linker and in here we need to add some lib, lib files as the dependencies in the additional dependency edit and add a new one and we are first we are going to put the sdl2.lib and then we need the stl2 main.lib. These two lib files are required for stl2 run. Everything is working and I mean uh, set up and let's check if it works fine. I will include stl2. You need to inst uh, include it like this because inside the include folder there is no such folder called stl2. So we will include it like this. And then I will create the main function. We need to pass in into argc and also character pointer argv list I mean array and then I will just return 0 because it is an integer function now let's try whether it works fine just click on this button to run it and now everything is working fine which means the setup is done now that we have set up SDL we will get into creating the window for this project I will be using object oriented programming and there will be a main game class in which we will have the game loop and also we will create the window everything in the game class. First I will create a header file and in the header files section I will create game.h. Now we need to include sdn for this in this uh, header file so it has include sdn.h. Now we will create a game class and then a public and also private in the public there will be a constructor where we will create the window renderer and set up stl there will be a constructor and there will be a run function in which we will have the main game loop and also all the updating will be done in this run function then we have a cleanup function in which we will destroy the window and the renderer and we will also quit sdl 
that is for memory clean up just cleaning the, uh, clearing the memory now the private will have some variables to store the window width the height then there will be window and also renderer normally we use integer type variable for the window width and height but this time i will be using double double is actually decimal number with more precision than float that is more decimal points than float the reason why i'm using double is because we will be using this window width for some calculations and uh, the calculations will be done on double because for more precision and better game the window width will be 1200 you can set it to whatever you want and then i will also create window height variable and the value of the window height will be 680 then there will be an window and a render the reason why i'm creating it as a private variable is because we will be using it in different functions in this run function we will be using it in the cleanup and also in the game function in the game constructor we will be using it so to use it in all the one all the function we are creating it as a private variable and it's of the data type sdl underscore window pointer and the name will be window we need a renderer also and it will be sdl underscore renderer pointer and we will be using this renderer to draw everything onto the screen to update everything will be done using the renderer the window is just to just the window now we need to create a game.header game.cpp in the source files i will add a new item game.cpp now we need to include that game class so we need to i mean we need to use the game class in here then implement the game class in here so we will import the game.header file game.h now also i will be printing the errors if there is any so i will include io stream also now we need to create the game class First, there is a constructor and it doesn't have any data type. So just first we need to pass in the name of the class, two columns, and then the name constructor is also the game itself. And it takes in nothing, so we are leaving it empty. Now we need to initialize SDL. How to do that? We will be checking for errors also at the same time. If SDL init, this will initialize SDL and we are going to initialize the video of SDL, video system. SDL init underscore video. And if it is successful then it will return 0 and if it is not it will not return 0 so we will check if it is not 0 if it is not 0 then uh, the initializing has failed so in that case we will print out failed to initialize stl ok i am not ending the line because if this doesn't work the code will completely be uh, terminated so we need not end the line we will create the window as the window is a private vari variable that we just created we can use it without the data type in here and the function to create the window is sdl create window and then we have some arguments to pass in first one is the title i'll just give it a title of projectile shooter then the next one is the x and y now uh, this one should not be limited to some area we can the window can be in any position on the screen so we can just set it to undefined that means it can have any position on the screen so sdl window pose undefined that is we are not defining a position for the x and also y that is we are not uh, defining a special position for the window then the next argument is the window width and the height which will be the variables that we created window width and window height okay window width and window height and then there is a variable called flags and it, it, it i'm setting it to zero that means everything will be default the default window will be created now we need to check for error if window is not created then we need to uh, if it fails to create the window then we need to print out something so if not window if window doesn't exist or if window is in null pointer then we will print out failed to create window Okay, now the window error checking is also done now we need to create the renderer the renderer is also a private fun uh, variable so we can use it without that data type and the function to create the renderer is sdl underscore create renderer uh, yeah it's working now we need to specify for which window you want to create the renderer and it's for the window itself and then there is the next one is the index and we are just setting it to 1 and it represents the driver or the uh, available rendering driver like OpenGL etc and setting it to minus 1 will choose automatically SDL will choose whatever is this uh, whatever is available 
and then if the GPU or graphics card is available in the system then we can accelerate the performance by running everything on the GPU instead of running it on the software uh, or CPU how to do that we just pass in a flag of STL render accelerated which means the GPU will be activated if there is if it is available and we need to create the okay we need to first check if there is an error in creating the renderer so if it's, uh, just like we did for the window if not renderer then this time we will print out failed, failed to create renderer okay now that is also done now we will create the run function when we come here it is of a void data type it is void function that is it will not return anything so first we will pass in the data type and then the name of the class it is the game class two columns and then the name of the function which is run and this doesn't take in any parameters now we will create a variable called running and we will create a while loop based on this variable there will also be a variable of the type sdl event which which we will use for checking for every event such as quit event keyboard mouse everything event will be checked based using this variable now we need to create the main while loop and while this loop is running the game is running so while running while running this variable while running that is while running is true as default it is set it to true if something happens then we will set it to false so while running while the uh, running variable is true only this code will the code inside this loop will be executed and then we need to check for the events yeah the function that we use is sdl poll event this will check for every existing event and it gets and just takes action based on that and we need to pass in the sdn event type variables reference so this variable we are passing it now we are going to check if the event type is quit that is if we click on the quit button on the on the top right corner of the window if we click on that then we need to close the window so we are going to check for that event if event dot type is equal to sdl underscore quit that is if we click on that quit button then we will set running to false and when running into running is set to false then window will not be shown so window will be closed and then outside this event uh, event loop i will uh, draw a black background to the window as you'll set renderer draw color and then we to which renderer we want to set it to we want to set it to our the only renderer that we just created and then there are four values rgb and m which is representing red green blue and alpha alpha is for transparency or opacity Zero means it will be hundred percent transparent. Two fifty five is the highest value, which means it is zero percent transparent. Now we are going to give it a black color. As default, it's black color itself, but I'm just going to give it. Now we need to clear the frame, uh, clear the window for the next frame to render. How to do that? Just call the SDN render clear function, and then we need to pass in the render. And then we'll also present the uh, latest frame on the window using sdl render present and again we need to pass in the render with this our setup is done now we just need to create the cleanup function the cleanup function is not necessary actually but we are just doing it because it's a good practice again the class is game and then the name of the function is cleanup first we'll destroy the renderer using sdl destroy renderer function and then the renderer that we want to destroy is the renderer that we created similarly we want to destroy the window And the window is window itself and then we'll just quit sdl using sdl underscore quit with this everything cleanup is also done now we just need to call it in the main function let's come into the main.cpp and we need to include okay we are we need not include sdl in here because in the game.h we have already included it so we need not include in the game dot i mean main.cpp now in here i will include the game.h game.h because we are going to call that function and inside this main function i will create the, an instance of the class game class because it the construction the constructor doesn't take in any argument we need not put in a parenthesis in here now we will call the game dot run function on the game and also the cleanup function and with this our window setup is done let's try to run it how do you run it just uh, go into the debug section and start without debugging it's because i'm full screen there is no that uh, that run button is not available because I'm in full screen now after this I'll be showing you how to do it in the visual studio code also I know we have a window created with the project shooter as the title 
and it's having width of 1200 and height of 6, 680 and when we click on this button everything is closing that means our window creation is done now we'll just show you how to do it in visual studio code now what to do in the code folder i will create a new folder called headers which will store the header files and i will also create another folder called a source which will for the cpp file in the headers i will create a new file called game.h and then i will come into this game.h and copy everything copy everything in the game.h in the visual studio and paste in the game.h and then this time we should include sdl2 slash sdl.h because in the include folder it the everything the sdl.h is inside a folder called sdl2 so we need to first pass in sdl2 slash sdl.h now in the source i will create a new file called game.cpp then come into here and copy everything and paste it in here now the game.cpp is also done now we just need to do it in the main.cpp we'll just copy everything from here paste now there is just the compiling is not enough we need to create an o, o, o file for the classes that's why using shell studio is better so in the in the assets there's commands.txt and i will put a command in here and we need a command to come uh, to convert this class to an O file or object file then only we can use it for our use it in our main.cpp so again we are using mgw so g++ and then we need to include the uh, sdl so the folder to the include of sdl then again we need to include the game.h and where is it it is in the code slash headers so we are including that one also code slash headers and then we need the lips asset slash lib the location to the lib folder then uh, hyphen c because we are converting into an object then the uh, path to the cpp file which is code slash classes i mean source let me check uh, c code slash source slash game dot cpp location to the cpp file and then we need to just put in hyphen o and then the name of the object file and where it should be located so in the assets folder i will create a new folder called o underscore files or i'll just pass in obj to install the object file or o files and then i will pass in the location to that word which will which is the location where the object files will be stored in the obj folder i want it to be located in the obj folder and then the name of the file which is game dot o now we need to make some changes to the compiling a command also in here also we need to include the header files of the code folder so uh, hyphen i code slash headers this will include the header files and then we also need to include the uh, object files while compiling how to do that just give the path to the object files asset slash obj slash game dot o which is the name of the object file now just first copy this one to create the obj file and then paste it in here okay now let's check if the, it was created and the obj there is a file called game.o now we can compile it using this one just copy that and paste and that one is also working fine now we can just run the program dot slash program and then we have a window created with the title projectile shooter that means our window creation is done and we'll get into the next section now we have created the window and the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create the player as you might have seen in the demo the player will be in the center of the screen and it will be a circle so for that we will create a new uh, new filter in the header files and it will be sprites in that we will create the player class we'll add a player dot h header file and then we need to include sdl we'll include sdl.h and we'll create the player class class player and then there will be public and private as always and in the public we'll create a constructor for the class and this takes in some arguments one is the x location then y location then the radius of the player because it's going to be a circle and then the color of the player so i will take in the x and y as a double because 
then we when we uh, we'll have to use it for some calculations and for more precision we are using double px the reason why i give p in here is because i will create a i will create private variables called x y radius and all is to specify that it is the parameter and not the private variable and there will be py then the radius can be integer itself and then we need the color p underscore color and the color takes in four it will be an array of four items rgb and alpha so passing the length of four so the length of the array will be four and we need a draw function to draw everything out of the screen so void draw and then we need to pass in the renderer because we use the renderer to draw the data type of the renderer is sdl renderer and then it's a pointer and then we'll just call it renderer itself and we need some private variables and they are double values of double of x and y position x position and y position and the radius which is an integer and also integer values for r g b and a these are the variables that represent the color of the player now with this our header file is done so i will just close that now we need to uh, create a new filter in the source files it will be again sprites itself and inside that i will add a new item called player player dot h first i will create the constructor itself for that we need to include the we need to include the player dot h has include player dot h and then I will create the constructor. The class is player and the name of the constructor is player itself. And we need to pass in the uh, x, y and all. So the data type of... Okay, I will just go into the game uh, player.h. Copy everything inside this. Copy that and then I will come into the player.cpp and paste it inside here. And now we can implement that. This is what we have now. Everything is pasted inside. And now we will set the value of the private variable px, uh, uh, x to px, y to py, radius to p radius, and then we have some values uh, variables r, g, b, and a. We will access the elements of the p color array using index and then assign to the respective variables. R will be the first value, first item of the color array g will be the second one be the third one and then the fourth one is alpha which is the third index number three which is the fourth element now let's check what the what is the error and identify color because it should be p underscore color and not just color okay now that error is also fixed now we need to create the draw function we'll go down and it's a void function so void the name of the class is player functions name is draw and we need to pass in sdl renderer that the type is sdl renderer pointer and then the name is render now sdl doesn't provide any functions to draw a circle we need to we need to install third party libraries but we are not going to do that we will be drawing this single logic we will be st stacking many lines of different width on different rows and it, it will uh, make it look like a circle um, the color will be this uh, based on the color that we pass into the array rgb and a so first to set the color we will call the sdl set render draw color function and then the first argument is the renderer itself which we pass into the function and then we have rgb and a so we will just pass in the name of the variables itself now we need to draw the circle how to do that i will show you with it with an image different lines of different widths and it will give us it will look like it's a circle so first we need to loop through we need to create a loop to draw different lines of different width and then we'll create a variable called a dy which is delta y and it will be equal to minus of radius so initially it will be equal to minus of radius and then the condition is that the radius uh, the dy should be smaller than or equal to radius that is its highest value that the dy variable can have is the value of the radius itself and then we will increment the uh, delta y now this will be the different values of the dy variable first it will be equal to minus radius then it goes until to zero and then from zero to plus radius so this will be the value of the dy variable and then we need to we need the width there will be width for the 
for each lines right so we create a variable called width and it will be equal to square root of radius into radius which means radius square and we will subtract from it dy delta y square i will also uh, uh, multiply the whole everything by 2 and this will be how this is how it will come firstly when the dy if uh, let's assume that the uh, radius is 10 and square root of 10 uh, square of 10 is 100 and then initially the dy will be minus 10 minus 10 square is also 100 because minus x whole square is equal to x whole square so 100 minus 100 will be 0 that means the width will be 0 then when the dy uh, get increased to minus 9 then minus 9 square is 81 which means 90 and we are also multiplying it by 2 which means the width will be 38 pixels then it will be 36 into 2 and when we go down into the last one again it will be 0 why because uh, this time the value of the delta y will be 10 and initially it was minus 10 then in here it will be 9 in it was minus 9 in here which means the same value will be there for the square of the numbers which means the same width we need to we have a star text which will be the x x x coordinate of the line and it will be equal to the x that we pass into this function the width of the uh, what to say width of the line divided by 2 now, now this will uh, in the starting the first star text will be in here then it will go in here and you will keep on going into the now we will go into the index that is the the last tip of the line and it will be equal to star text plus the width of the line so this one will be the first one first index then second one and it keeps on going then we need a current y variable because we are going from top to bottom we, initially we will be in this position then we go down go down again and again we go down so there will be there should be a variable to store the y axis and it will be equal to the y that we pass in plus d dy will be initially minus 10 if the radius is 10 so y minus 10 y minus 9 and it goes until y so the, now we need to because we are going to draw different lines we need to call the function to draw the line so str render draw line we need to pass in the renderer as the first argument and then the x of the x x1 which is the star x star x and then our y is not changing so it will be current y and then we have the x2 which is the index and then again y2 because we have the y axis is not changing for a single line we will pass in current y itself with this the logic for the circle is also implemented now let's try to draw it we will go into the game.h and include the player class as include player.h and then we will go into the game.cpp into the run function and inside that we will create variables to store the player color so in the player color it will be an array of four items uh, it will be equal to I, I'm going to give it a white color for the player so 255 for everything that means it will be a white color we need to create an object of the player class player will name it player itself and the constructor takes in the x which is window width divided by 2 a big we need window height divided by 2 for the y axis so the center of the circle will be in the center of the screen and then the radius I will give it 10 that's why I just use 10 as the example and then the color of the window will be I mean uh, circle will be the player color array so because it takes in an array of four items and then under after this SDL render clear only then uh, we should draw everything otherwise you cannot see anything uh, the no player dot draw and then we need to pass in the render let's try if it works or not we have a circle at the center I will show you how to do it in Visual Studio Code also then I will create a new file called player.h and come into the player.h in Visual Studio and copy everything copy everything and paste it in the in here and we should include sdl2 slash sdl.h and come into the player.cpp and copy everything in the source create a new file called player.cpp and then paste everything in the game.cpp I mean in the game.h we need to include player.h so it has include player.h and in the game.cpp I'll copy this I'll just copy the whole I'll copy the whole run function and replace this one 
let's try now we need to create one more command for combining the player player class so i'll just copy this one that we used to create your bj file for the game class and copy it in the this time we just need to make some changes we need to change this one to player.cpp and then the name of the obj will be player now uh, in here we also need to include our player player.o while compiling so assets obj slash player.o i'll just copy this player.o creating command and paste it in the terminal okay now there is an error Uh, in the player.cpp, I will also include cmath. cmath. Let's go down and we will use std square root in here. And now it is working fine. And then I will, uh, we have already create uh, updated the game.o file. Let's check if the player.o is created and it is created. Now we need to combine it. So I'll just come into the commands.txt and copy this one paste it in here and run it. let's try to run the program and then we have a player in the center of the screen now that we created the player we'll get into creating the projectile so in the sprites i will create a new item called projectile.h a file called projectile.h and i will go into the player.h and copy everything and paste in the projectile.h and we need to make some changes to it in here we, we need uh, two more arguments for the velocity so there will be velocity in the x and y direction p underscore velocity x and also p underscore velocity y and both of them are of the type double velocity y now we need to create two more private variables for the velocity x and y double velocity x and also velocity y now the variables also is created now as you have seen in the demo the projectiles are moving so we need an update function to move the projectile so we'll create a void update function and it doesn't need to take in any argument now I'll create a new file in the sprites of the source files called projectile.h I mean projectile.cpp projectile.cpp Now go into the player.cpp and copy everything and paste in the projectile.cpp One thing I forgot to make change in the projectile.h is that the class should not be player but you should change it to projectile Also the constructor should be projectile and not player Okay, now that is also done. We are going to the projectile node CPP and instead of including the player.h, we need to include the projectile.h and then the constructor is projectile and the class name is also projectile. Again, we need to add the two more parameters for the velocity x and y. Double p underscore velocity x and double p underscore velocity y. So both of them is also added. I uh, will give the value to the private variables. Velocity x will be equal to the velocity that we pass in, which is p underscore velocity x. And then the velocity y will be the velocity that we pass in, p underscore velocity y. And that is also done. Now we need an update function. I also change this player to projectile because the class is the projectile. Now we need not change the logic for drawing the lines and all because our projectile is also circle. Now we need the update function void and then the name of the class which is projectile and then the name of the function which is update. Now we need to increment the uh, position of the uh, change the position of the projectile based on the velocity. So the x value that is the x coordinate value will be increased by the velocity x and the y coordinate value will be increased by the velocity y okay now the projectile class is also done now we will go into the game.h file and include the projectile in here include projectile.h now we will go into the game.cpp and then we need to uh, write the logic for creating the projectile 
Uh, we want a projectile to be created whenever we click on the screen with the left mouse. So whenever there is a left mouse but left but uh, left mouse button event, then new projectile should be created. And where should it be directed to? It should be directed to wherever we click on the screen. I will I will demonstrate how the logic works with an example. First, we need to create an uh, we need to check for an event which is the mouse button event. So if event dot type is SDL mouse button down that is if we click on the mouse button and then we need to check which button we clicked on. We need to uh, create a procedure only if we click on the left mouse button. So if event dot button dot uh, button is equal to if event dot button dot button is SDL button left which is the left mouse button. If we click on the left mouse button then we need to create a projectile and to create the projectile we need to give it a value for the velocity x and also velocity y. For now we will just give it uh, some random value like we and then we will be implementing the logic later. But we need an array or a vector to store all the projectiles. So we will create a vector and to, in, uh, to create a vector we need to include that. So hash include vector. And only we can create it. We create a vector. So in here we will create a vector. The reason why I am creating vector is because so that we need not specify the length and all, and it's much easier to work with vectors for cases like this. Now how do we create that? Just call std vector, std colon colon vector, and then we need to pass in the data type, which is the projectile, because we are going to store in projectiles, and then the name of the uh, vector is projectiles vector. And what should we do? We should ingre increment to the projectiles vector. We should add to the projectile vectors new projectile when we click on the left mouse button. For now, I'll just give it a random value. How to add it to the uh, projectiles array? We call projectiles dot embrace back. That means a new projectile will be added to the end of the projectiles array. And then the first argument is the x x uh, uh, the x coordinate and as default it will be as we want the projectile to be coming out from the player, the x will be for a window width by 2, which is the position of the player also. And the y will be window height by 2. The height will be window height divided by 2 also. There is a typo. Window height divided by 2. And then we need to pass in the radius, which is, I will just give it a radius of 5. So it is smaller than that of the player and then the color we need an array to store the color of the projectiles. So I will go on top into here and create a new array to store the color. And the projectile color array will also be of four items and then I want to give it a color of red itself. And you might be wondering why I am creating a new array when there is already an array with uh, which stores white color. It's just for uh, understanding properly I am doing it like this. Then we pass in the projectile color into this. Now we need the velocity x and y. For now, I'll just give it a value of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for both velocity for x and y velocity. Okay. Now we need to draw the uh, projectiles. So how to do that? As we are storing the projectiles in an in a vector, we should loop loop through it and then draw every one of them. So I'll just come under this player dot draw and I will loop through the projectiles array. Now for auto and then an and sign. That is we are looping through we are, uh, we are not specifying the data type that is auto means it will automatically uh, C++ will automatically understand which data type we are using or we can use something like this also then just pass in the data type projectile and then how we will access that. We will access it like projectile each one of them will be projectile and then which array we are looping through or vector we are looping through it is the projectiles vector so we pass in something like this and then we need to call the draw function on each projectile so what we uh, gave it in here we have to put it in here also and then call the draw function and the draw function takes in a parameter called renderer because we use that to draw the line and then we also call the update function to move the projectiles and let's try whether it works or not now we have something like this. Let me try to click on the screen and when I click a new projectile is created and it is moving in a direction based on the velocity that we gave. And let me try to change the velocity into minus value. I'm coming here and change this velocity x to a minus 
minus 0 0.5 and then the direction will also be changed it will be towards the left side click on the screen it is going to the left side also right on the mouse point if i click on here then that projection should be directed towards this one so it should go like this from here to like this and then if i click on here it should go like from here to here then if i click on here it should be like from here to here so we are going to implement that logic and we will be using a bit of trigonometry for this it because it is based on the based on where we click on the screen we need to get the position where we click on the screen the x and y coordinate of where we click on the screen and it is easy to get we create a variable called mouse x and it will be event dot button dot x this will give us the x position on where we click on the screen and then we create a mouse y variable and it will be event dot button dot y which is the y coordinate of the position where we click on the screen now i will show you an image now if this is the uh, player location and this is the location where we click on the screen we need to get the angle between okay we split both of them into two components x and y components so we get the this one will be the x value and this one will be the y value based on that we need to get an angle between these then only we can get the velocity so how to do that we use a tan 2 which is a trigonometry function it is like the inverse of tan it is based on the y and x or based on the opposite side and the adjacent side we get the angle between them so in here to use that to use the math function we need to import cmath so hash includes cmath and we come here and create a variable called a double angle radians so the cmath the cmath functions that is the a tan the trigonometric functions return uh, the angles in radian and not in degree because it's the si unit so we need to take care of that i mean we need not take care of that because everything is ready to take in the radian as the angle now we need to pass in two arguments which is the double of y and x double type variable of y and x now that's why i gave the uh, window height and or as double variables first we need to pass in the mouse y mouse y minus window height by 2 that is the y and then the x will be mouse x minus window width by 2 and because it is because uh, this is the uh, player players y location and this is the players x location based on that we pass in the value now uh, if this is the screen and this one is the location of the player which is equal to the x in the x it is equal to window width divided by 2 and in the y it is equal to window height divided by 2 and this a tan 2 will return the this theta angle between these two now what will be the velocity now the x velocity will be the cos of the radian divided angle divided by 2 and the y velocity will be the sine of the angle divided by 2 a cos is adjacent by hypotenuse that means this x value divided by hypotenuse and the whole every whole of it is divided by 2 that will be the x velocity and then the sine is opposite by hypotenuse which is y divided by hypotenuse and the whole divided by 2 that will be the velocity y so we create variables to store the velocity x and y velocity x will be std cos we are going to find the cos of the angle radians so the cos of the angle radian and the whole everything is divided by 2 this will give the velocity x and then we have the velocity y also and it will be equal to the sine of angle radians sine of angle radians and the whole divided by 2 so this is what we have for the velocity i will pass in the velocity values into this function uh, into this employees pack where we add to the where we create a new projectile and add it to the projectile array so we pass in the velocity x for the velocity x and velocity y variable for the velocity y now let's try whether it works fine and now wherever we click it is the projectile is directed to that area which means the projectile creation is also working fine now we have created the projectile also we will get into creating the enemy in the sprites filter of the header files i will add a new item called enemy.h now we will uh, go into the projectile.h and copy everything and paste it in the enemy.h now change the projectile into enemy all the projectile into enemy now i will go into i will create a new files new file in the source files sprite filter it will be enemy.cpp 
and just copy everything from the projectile.cpp and paste in enemy.cpp and then we need to include enemy.h instead of projectile and also change every projectile into enemy for the draw function also the class is in me and for the update also with this the cre class creation is done now we will get into the game.header file game.h to include the enemy so include enemy.h and then we will we will be doing everything else in the game.cpp file we will be generating the enemies after a certain time interval so we need to record the time and we need to create some variables related to that and to record the time and all we will, we will use a library in C++ and it is the chrono library it will give us the high resolution clock which we will be using now we'll go into the run function to store the enemy in, enemies in the in a vector of enemy data type and also there should be a color for the enemy later we will be changing it to a random color but now we'll just give it a static color so it will be an integer enemy color it will be an array of four items and for now we will just give it a color of red 255 and only the alpha will also be 255 now we create a we need to create a vector to store the enemies so std vector and the data type is the enemy class enemy class the name will be enemies now we need a variable to store the time interval that, that is after a certain interval new enemies should be created for now we'll just give it a value of one second or thousand millisecond later we will be changing it to adjust the number of enemy uh, adjust the interval based on the number of enemies on the screen so it will be an integer variable and the name will be enemy generation interval for now we'll just get set it to thousand which is thousand millimeter milli, millisecond now we'll get a variable called in the last generation time and we are i'm giving it a data type of auto it's not actually a data type what this specifies is that c plus plus will choose the data type because the chrono the chrono library gives us a little bit longer data type which is i think it's better to give auto and then we use chrono library using std chrono and we want to use the high resolution clock to record the time and we want to record the time at the specific moment so we call that now on it with this we get the time at that specific moment that is the it will store the time at which the last enemy was created now we will go inside the run function and we will check for the current time so i will just come in here and auto current time this will record the time at the current moment when this uh, line of code is executed again it will be the same thing itself std chrono high resolution clock now this will give the time at that specific moment and then we want an elapsed time variable that is the time passed between the current time and this last generation time and if it is greater than the enemy generation interval only then only we will be creating an enemy so elapsed time and it will be the time difference between the two so we use std chrono again and duration class is the function that we use to check the time interval and then we want it to be returning in millisecond so we pass in std chrono millisecond and we want to check the time interval between the current time and the last generation time so inside parenthesis we will pass current time minus last generation time and then we will check the count between it which returns the time interval between the current time and the last generation time now we want to check if it is greater than the enemy generation interval that is if it is greater than one second then we will generate greater than or equal to one second then we will generate the enemy so we create an if statement and check for if elapsed time is greater than or equal to the enemy generation interval if it is greater than or equal to the enemy generation interval only uh, we will create the enemy so i'll just create a variable called enemy x and it will be a double because we want it to be high precision while the movement and all so for now i'll just give it a value of 10 and i will create another one which is enemy y it will also I'll just give it a static value of 10 for now now the radius also i will give it a value like something like 30 for now we will be giving it a random value and now we need to use the same method that we used while creating the projectile based on the location where we click on the screen the projectile will be directed towards that but this time we want to make a small change this time we want the enemies to be directed towards the player that is towards the center of the screen so we use the same 8 and 2 function trigonometric function itself 
So we create a variable called a double angle in radians. What is angle is enough, but mostly we use degrees. That's why I'm uh, specifying angle radians. And it will be 8 and 2. Because we have already uh, used the 8 and 2, we need not import the CMath again because it's already imported. Now, the first, first uh, parameter is the Y and then the X. The Y will be the Y position of the player, which is the window height divided by 2. And we come in here where the player is created player dot row let's look at the player this is the player and we have the x is window width by 2 and height is window and the y axis is window height divided by 2 so we pass in the same value first window height divided by 2 because y is coming here first and then window width divided by 2 with this the enemy uh, we get the angle to find the velocity and we use the same method which is the cos will be the velocity x and the sine will be the velocity y again it will be double and we will find the cos cosine of the angle radians and if we just pass in this value the velocity will be very fast that is the enemy will be coming very fast so i'll just divide it by six this is the speed that i just experimented and got so it will be a fair enough speed for the enemy there will be a velocity y and it will be the sine of angle radians and then we'll divide it by 6 again. For the projectile, we divided it by 2 to reduce the speed. This time we'll divide it by 6. So the enemy will be much slower than the projectile. Now we need to add the enemy. We need to add an enemy using this data into the enemy's vector. So we use the embrace pack function to add it to the enemy uh, enemy's uh, vector. And we need to pass in the uh, all the parameters that the constructor of the enemy class takes. And it takes the enemy x, so we will pass in the enemy x, then it takes enemy y, then it takes the radius, then we have the color velocity x and velocity y. The color will be the enemy color array that we created and velocity x will be velocity x and velocity y. With this the enemy is also created, now we need to make some changes regarding the enemy generation time. We need to check, uh, set the last generation time to the current time. So. Uh, whenever an enemy is created, the last generation time will be changed to that current time and it, then only we can create another enemies based on the time interval. Now we'll go down and loop through the enemies vector and uh, draw every one of them. The data type is enemy and we need to, it should be a reference and then we'll access it by enemy and then the name of the vector which is enemies. With this we are looping through the enemies vector and then we'll draw each enemy by enemy.draw function and then we need to pass in the render and we'll also call the update to move the enemy's position to change the enemy's position or move the enemy now let's try whether it works or not okay now when an enemy is coming and after a certain interval new enemies are generated and it is all directed towards the center now we need to give a random position to the enemy random color to the enemy and also random radius so now we'll do that we'll go on top and we need to include the random library in order to use random so hash include random. Now we need to create a random device in order to generate random values. So in here I will create variables std random device and we use this random device to generate random values and I will name it rd. Then we need a generator also both of these work together to create the random values and mt1193 generator. The name will be generated and we need to pass in the rd that we created. With this the setup vision now we we'll just need to uh, give them distribution that is from which value we want and from which value to which value we want the uh, value to be the random value to be generated and we will also assign the value to the variables. So in here inside this variable only will be inside this if statement only will be creating everything. I will first we need an std uniform in the distribution because now we are going to do it for the uh, radius and the radius is obviously a real uh, obviously an integer because we just gave it the data type okay i'll just change this to any uh, integer it's integer and there is one more error what is the error okay it's because we haven't put a semicolon here we are using uniform in the distribution that means only integer value will be generated and then the data type is integer then we'll just name the distribution enemy radius distribution and we want the values to be between 10 and 30 
because if it is smaller than 10 it is very difficult to hit the projectile on the enemy which means it will be very difficult and it's, if it is more than that it's very easy so it is a practical value 10 to 30 and then we will set the ran radius variable to the uh, to the random value and it will be enemy radius distribution we need to pass in the generator this will generate a random value between 10 and 30 and then we need we doesn't need this variable anymore now let's try if uh, the random is working fine and we can see that the enemies are coming with different sizes that means that the random is working fine now we need to give random position and and all so in here we will create new distribution it will be the random y distribution and it can be any value from 0 to the uh, height of the screen and then random x can be any value from 0 to the width of the yeah width of the screen in here i will create again an std uniform in the distribution because the position can be uh, integer itself random integer and it will be the y distribution y position distribution and it can be any value from uh, 0 to 680 because it's the window height so i'll just pass in the window height variable itself so it can be any value from 0 to window height then uh, we need to assign it to the variable enemy y is equal to uh, we are using the enemy uh, okay it's the y distribution and then we need to pass in the generator i'll just copy these two lines for the x also and change this y distribution to x distribution and in here also I will change it to x distribution variables name will be enemy x and then this one the limit will be from 0 to window width with that the enemy x and y is also done now it's okay we will just remove these two variables window height divided by 2 minus enemy y then only uh, the enemy will be directed towards the player and the window width divided minus enemy x now let's try and we can see that all the enemies are directed towards the player itself but there is a problem the projectile is created inside this one so we only want it to be generated outside the outside the canvas that we can see so we'll just implement that using an if statement here we will I'll just change this enemy y name into random y and then this enemy x to a random x double enemy x will be equal to there will be a variable called choice so it should also be randomly created so we will create a new distribution for the random choice I'll just copy this line these two lines and paste then the distribution's name will be random choice distribution let's say distribution and the value can be either 0 or 1 so 0 and 1 is the final limit and then in here I'll create a variable called choice1 and it will be random choice distribution and I will use the same thing again to generate another random value which will be the random two choice2 two variable or it can be yeah just something naming doesn't matter much choice2 we create the variables for the enemy x and y it will be double variables itself enemy x will be now we are going to uh, use a shorthand form shorthand approach form for the nested if statements because if we use a normal format it will be very long and it will be will not be very nice to understand so we'll use the one line syntax and it is only available after c plus plus 11 we check if the choice one is equal to zero if that is the case now we put a question mark in here and then inside this we will check for the other conditions just put a colon in here and if that is not equal to if the enemy x choice 1 is not equal to 0 then the enemy x will be random x now we need to check if the choice 1 is 0 then we will create an another condition inside it we will check for the value of choice 2 so choice 2 and if it is equal to 0 if choice 2 equal to 0 then we will again put a question mark to give the condition and in here we will be putting the uh, what will happen if the choice 2 is equal to 0 so again I will put a colon in here and if the choice 2 is, in, is not equal to 0 then the uh, choice uh, then the value of the enemy x will be equal to window width plus radius so that 
the enemies will be generated outside the canvas. Now, what if the choice 2 is equal to 0? Then it will be equal to 0 minus radius. So, if the choice 2 is equal to 0, then the enemy will be generated in the left side of the screen. And if it is the choice 2 is equal to 1, then it will be generated in the right side. And there is an error in here. In here, we should put a semicolon. I mean, not a semicolon, we should close the bracket. Now that one is done. Now we need to create the variable for the enemy y also. So I'll just copy this one. Now we have, we need to check if the choice one is equal to zero. If the choice one is equal to zero, then we will generate a random y. So I'll just cut this. This one will not be there. And in here I will put the, after this question mark, I will put the random x, random y. So if the choice one is equal to uh, zero, then the random y will be the value for the y axis. Now, the reason why we are doing uh, this random y in here if the choice one is 0 and uh, random y uh, x in here if the choice one is not equal to 0, when both of these come together only, the enemies can be generated outside the canvas. So, we give if choice one is equal to uh, 0, then uh, the value of the enemy x will be equal to random y and then put a colon in here to check for the otherwise condition. If choice 2 is equal to 0, then we again put a question mark. And if it is the case, if choice 2 is equal to 0, it will be equal to 0 minus radius. And otherwise, it will be window width plus radius. Choice 2 is equal to 1. It will be window width plus radius. I mean, it should be window height. So, change that to window height. Okay, the reason is because we have changed the value of the variable. Name of the variable should be enemy y. Now, let's try, if, let's check if there is any error. Okay, now the enemy is generated outside the canvas. And it is coming from random position. All are directed towards the player. Now, most of the enemies are generated in the right side. Okay, now it's coming from the left side also. Which means our enemy creation, I mean the enemy, enemy generation logic is done. Now, we just need to give the enemy a random color. So we create, again, create a new distribution. And it will have values from 0 to 225, 255. I'll just copy that and come in here. Paste. It will be again integer, but this time it will be color distribution. And the values it can have is from 0 to 255. And then we need to generate it three times for the R, G and B. So, in the R will be equal to color distribution. And we are going to generate it one time. And then I'll just copy this two more times for the G and B. G and B. So, three times the random value between 0 and 255 will be generated. Now, because we are passing, we need to pass in a, an array in here and it's the enemy uh, color array, we will need to change, update the value of the array. And how to do that? We just access it using the index. The enemy color is the name of the array and then first index is 0, it will be equal to R. Then the second, the second index is equal to is 1 and it will be equal to G and then enemy color third one will be the index will be equal to 2 and it will be equal to b now we are not we we should not be changing the fourth one which is alpha because we want it to be 100 percentage opaque or it should be 100 percentage visible then only we can see it properly so we are not going to be changing the fourth one and now we have a blue color a green color and it is having random values which means that is also working now we have created all the sprites the enemies projectiles and also the players the next step is the collision detection. First, we check for the collision detection between the enemy and the projectile. Whenever a projectile hits an enemy, we, all, we want to remove both the enemy and the projectile. So, how to do that? That's what we are going to be doing next. This is how it will be. We will check for the distance between the center of the projectile and the enemy. Also, we will check the sum of the radius of this enemy and the projectile. If the distance between those is smaller than or equal to the radius, then we can say that the collision happens. You can understand it with this image. So whenever it is colliding, we can see that the any the the radius sum that is the projectile's radius plus the enemy's radius will be equal to the uh, distance. So if that is the case, only collision happens, and otherwise, uh, if there is no collision, the distance between them will be greater than the sum of the radius, which means there is no collision. So that's how we are going to be checking for the collision. So to do that, we need to get the uh, x, y, and the radius of both the enemy and the projectile. So, we need to create functions that returns these values. So, the x and y are double values. So, the functions will also be double. Get x and then we need the get y also. 
then the radius is integer from the integer get radius now i will just copy these three functions i'm going to the projectile notice because we need to get the three values of the projectile also now we can create implementation for this in the enemy dot uh, cpp the data type is double and then the class name is enemy and then the name of the function is get x we will return the x now we need to do the same thing for the y and also the radius double enemy get y and then we will return y and we want the integer enemy radius and we will return radius now just copy all these three functions okay the name of the function is not radius it's get radius and just copy these three functions and go into the projectile of cpp and paste it in here now replace the enemies with the projectile because that's the class that we are right now located in now that is also done moving it into the enemy or cp game or cpp and now we are going to be doing everything in this file so it will be done in the run function and I will go under this enemy generation logic. Under that I will just go and create a form loop. We need to loop through the projectiles a vector and inside that we will be looping through the enemy's vector and then we will be checking for collision. Now while only when they quiet we need to remove those projectiles and the enemies. So we need to keep track of the index also. So we will not be using this traditional approach like this. We will be have, uh, making a small change. Again we will be the same for and then we are going to specify auto which means that data type will be chosen by c++ now the projectile is the first one that we are looking to so projectile will be equal to the we add the projectiles vector and begin that is the first item of the projectiles vector will be the value of the projectile variable and then there is one more operation it should not be equal to the last value which is projectiles dot end now you might be wondering what this is this is just another way of looping through it but the index will also be tracked on so that Whenever, whenever specific enemy collide with a specific projectile, we can remove both of those. We can access both of the specific array and remove that. With this method, we cannot do that. So we will be using this one. Now in, inside this, I will create another for loop and with the same method itself. This time, we will just change the projectile into enemies and the vector that we will be looping to is the enemies vector. So the enemy will not be equal to, will be equal to the enemies don't begin as default and then enemy will not be equal to enemies dot end now we have loop on to loop through the enemies vector also now what we'll do is we'll check the distance between the projectile and the enemy and it will be squared because that's how we check the distance using distance formula x1 minus x2 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and the whole root of that gives the distance between x and y i mean x uh, x uh, the particle one and particle two we will be using the same method, but instead of finding the square root of this, we will just keep it the square itself. We will be uh, taking the square of the sum of the radius. So if, if the distance is greater than the radius sum, then the distance square will also be greater than the radius sum and vice versa. So that's how the logic goes. Now distance square will be equal to the std power. We are going to raise the value into 2. So std power, we will use the uh, cmath library, which we already imported. And now uh, the first will the x1 will be projectile and then we need to pass in the uh, we need to pass in arrow so it's the same as doing this dot it's and but inside this type of formula we cannot use the dot so we'll use the projectile or uh, the arrow and then the name of the function get x with this we get the x of the projectile and then uh, we need to subtract from it the enemies get x now even if you pass in this enemy dot get x first and then the projectile the same value will be uh, return because as we are raising the number to do or as we are finding the square square means it will always be positive so a real number square will also always be positive uh, if it's the negative value of that certain, that specific real number also it will give the same value because uh, negative into negative is positive and positive into positive is also positive and we are going to raise it to two software comma is passing two with this we are raising the number to two now this is just one part we need to do one more part which is for the y coordinates we will add to it the std power of projectiles y value y projectiles y position projectile and then arrow get y we need to pass in get y and then from that we will subtract the enemy get y 
get y and then we need to raise everything into 2 so with this the distance coin is done now we just do the what the other one which is the uh, uh the radius sum square so double radius sum squared actually it can be it can be an integer but it is just passing into uh okay we just passing it as we just take the integer itself integer radius sum squared and it will be equal to the sum of the radius one raised to two again std power because we need to raise it to two and we need to add the projectiles and send the enemies radius so we call the projectile get radius plus the enemy get radius and then we raise everything to two after a comma just put two with this the uh, radius sum squared is also done now you need to check if the collision happens the collision happens only if the distance squared is smaller than or equal to the radius sum squared so if statement will create distance squared is greater smaller than or equal to radius sum squared then the collision have happened and we need to remove the enemies so what do we do we we'll just create a variable inside here called the projectile removed and it will be a boolean variable it will be either pro or false so boolean and then as default it will be set to false and when the collision happens it will be set to true now what we'll do is i'll just cut this and put it in here outside this one because we'll be accessing it outside this for loop cut it and paste just below the for loop of the projectile now inside this function what we'll do we will send the projectile and remove to true which we can use to uh, remove a certain a specific projectile the term removed will be equal to true now the enemy will also be removed so how to do that just access the enemy variable and it will be equal to the vector enemies vector dot erase so we are erasing the specific enemy from the array i mean the vector so we you will have to assign it to a variable otherwise it will not work there will be an error now we also need to um, we just set the variable position remove to true now what we need to do if the position remove is true the position remove is true then we need to remove the project time right so one more thing that I forgot to do is outside this if statement, if collision doesn't happen, then we need to increment the increment the value of the enemy. So plus plus enemy, this will increase the value. The enemies, the index will increase. It's like we do for normal form, we just specify an argument like i plus plus. Similarly, just plus plus enemy, and it will be doing only if we are not colliding with the projectile. Now outside this enemy form, I will just uh, we need to check for the we need to create an if statement and check if the projectile removed is true So if projectile removed Then we'll remove that specific projectile so projectile will be equal to we'll access the projectile's vector And then we will call the erase function to erase the specific projectile and we need to pass in the projectile With this the projectile will also be removed but what else if the projectile uh, doesn't collide then we need to Increment the projectile obviously so plus plus projectile uh, let's try it if this works or not. And when we hit on it is getting removed and only when we hit it is getting removed which means the collision is working fine. But what when a, a larger enemy comes we don't want to remove it the first time when we hit it like two or three times only we need to remove it so how to do that we'll create an if statement inside this uh, this collision if statement so if inside this if distance squared is more than or equal to radius squared we'll create another if statement so what we'll do we'll check if the radius is uh, smaller greater than 10 if enemy get radius is greater than 10 then we will not remove the enemy we will just reduce its radius uh, to reduce its radius we need to create another function inside the enemy.h which will be we'll just name it uh, it will be a word function obviously and then we will name it set radius it is we get increment or decrement uh, decrement the value of the radius and inside this we need to pass in an argument uh, delta radius or d radius so this will be the value by which we change the radius i will go into the enemy.cpp and create the implementation for that it is a void function and the class is the enemy and then we need to pass in the name of the function which is set radius and there is an argument which is in delta radius now what we need to do we need to add to the radius this delta radius for radius plus equals d radius so we are adding to 
the radius this d radius value now if we pass in a negative value inside this one then the radius will be subtracted which is what we are going to do now and here we just need to reduce the size of the uh, enemy so enemy dot set radius we are going to subtract it by minus 10 look at the else also and inside this uh, the main pull this inside this one we'll only re remove the enemy if the radius is more than 10 also this positive removed okay let it be the itself now a uh, procedure will be removed uh, even if the enemy is big or small now let's try and i'll just show you what the problem with this method is Now we can say that the specific enemy was very slow. Very small enemy is eating generated. Is eating. So we need to uh, prevent that one from happening. So when we when the size of the enemy is reduced, and then we need to check if it is again smaller than type. So how to do that? If enemy dot get radius minus ten is greater than ten, then only we will reduce the uh, size of the enemy. Now there is no very small enemies are not created, but moderate size ones are created. And which means that one is also working fine. Now, what about uh, removing the uh, projectiles when it go out of the screen? If I, if we shoot a projectile and it doesn't hit any enemy and it just goes out of the canvas, then we are not uh, actually removing it from the uh, removing it from the game, and more and more memory will be used, which will make our which will make our game slow. So we need to check if the position of the projectile is outside the window, and if that is the case, we'll just remove it. I don't know that inside this after looping through the projectile, I will just create a new statement. And if the projectiles x is smaller than zero, then or then we will remove the projectile. Or if the projectiles x is okay, I just forgot to put the smaller than zero. If it's smaller than zero, or or if it is greater than the window width. In both of these conditions, we will just remove the projectile. So I will set the projectile remove variable to true. Uh, to demonstrate that we'll just remove uh, release the values for now we'll set it to minus 100 or okay and i'll just close this one and if for demonstration purpose i'm just set it to 50 smaller than 100 or uh, if it is greater than window my window width minus 100 then we'll just remove that now i showed a projectile and it is getting removed before it is getting out of the screen which means that is also working fine it is getting removed so i know that one is also working fine, so I'll just remove the, uh, reduce the value to zero, add in here to window width itself. With this, our co uh, collision detection between the projectile and enemy is also done. Now we'll check for the collision between the player and the enemy. So when the enemy collides with the player, we want the game to stop. For now, we'll just set the running to false, which will just stop this loop from running, and the screen will go static. That it it will it will not. Uh, update anymore. So for now we will be doing that. First we need to loop through all the enemies. So I will just copy this one in which we loop through the enemies and then I will just paste it in here. Now this distance square we need to make some changes. It will not be projectile.getText but it will be the X position of the player. And we know the X position of the player is window width divided by 2. So we just pass in window width divided by 2. And then for this one projectile dot x also we will pass in window height divided by two because that is the y position of the uh, the player. So window height divided by two. And now the distance squared is done and the radius sum squared and the radius is ten. So I'll just pass in ten itself. Instead of this projectile dot get radius, I will just pass in ten. So that's the radius of the player. So we only need this main condition, this distance squared. And if the collision happens, then we'll just set the running variable to false. Now let's try it. Start without debugging. Now the enemies are coming. We can hit them. And let us wait for an enemy to hit us. And when it hit us, the screen is uh, getting, the updation gets stopped, which means the collision detection also works fine. And we have created all the sprites and also look for the collision. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create the particle effect. So we need to create new files. In the sprites, I will create a new file called particle.h. Now 
And then I will go to enemy.h and copy everything and paste in the particle.h and just change every enemy into particle. And we only need this draw and update functions for now and everything else will be the same. Now I will create a new file called particle.cpp in the source file sprites filter. And then I will again copy from enemy.cpp. Only the until the update to draw and the constructor only need to copy. Just copy those and paste in the particle.cpp. And then we again change the class name to particle itself. And then import particle.h instead of enemy.h. Now I will go into the game.h and we need to import it in the import it to use in the game.cpp. So in the game.h I will just include particle.h. Now go to game.cpp and we will create a new vector to store the to store the particles. So in here I will create an, an a vector, a CD vector and the matter type is particle. And then the name of the vector will be particles. We have created the vector. Now we need to generate the uh, particles whenever an enemy hits a projectile and also when we just shoot the projectile from the player. First I will go into the location where we have implemented the projectile enemy collision and it, it is inside here. Now if distance squared is found there already some square that is the condition if the collision happens. I will just create a new variable for a particle color and it will be the color of the enemies in which the projectile hit. So to know that, to get that we need to first create three more functions for the enemy class. There will be the get r, get g and get b. So we need to get all those three values in order to get the color of the particle that we are going to create. So let's just go into the enemy.h and create new functions and each of them are integers. So everything will be the integer functions get r, get g and get b. Now we need to create the implementation for that, so I will go into the enemy.cpp and do that. Get r and then we will return r. And then let's copy this two more times for the g and blue. Let's change the functions and the variables name. And with this, our class implementation is done. Now we are going to game.cpp and use the functions. Now the animals, we use this in that thing here. So we need to uh, access the functions using arrow. So the particle color will be an array of four items. So let's put four in here. And it will be RGB and A. Alpha will always be 255, which is the maximum value. Then the, around, uh, the R will be enemy get R. Then the enemy get G and A. Get B. The fuck will be 255. That is again something new. We're going to be creating eight enemies whenever ever the dead hits an enemy. So we create a form loop. And in the will be equal to it's the normal form loop that we always use. And if I is more than eight, that is we are going to loop eight times. We'll be creating eight projects and then we'll increment I. This is a normal form loop that we use in C. And then we need to create a random distribution to uh, to generate a random velocity for the planetary so that it will go in multiple different directions and use like a particle of it. So as we we use the uniform real distribution this time because we want uh, the double value da double to be the values of the velocity and then the data type is double then add the same with random velocity uh, distribution and then the values it can have is from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 when I said this from minus 1 to 1, the enemy was, the particles was going too far, which was not getting any good effect. So I'm just setting to minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Now we want to generate the random value two times for the velocity x and the velocity y. So random velocity x will be equal to, we are going to use the distribution. And then we are going to pass in the generator. That's how random value will be generated. Now I'll just copy this. Again for the y random velocity y and just change the name of the variable to random velocity y. With this the random value will be generated now we need to embrace by k to the particles vector. That's how we add the uh, create new enemies and add. And then we will be looping to the vector and drawing everything. So particles is the name of the vector and then we are adding to the last item. So embrace that. And then we need to just as the data type of the vector is the 
particularly in this part in the constructor of parameters. So first one is the x. So the uh, the particle will be coming from the projectile. So projectile don't get x will be the x value. Projectile get x it will be the x position of the projectile. And then the y will also be the y of the projectile itself. When the tail get y, and then we have the radius, color, and the velocity. So radius will be only three. It's it will be very small. And then the color will be the particle color itself. It is the color of the enemy. And then we have a velocity y and s. It will be random velocity x and random velocity y. Now we just added it to the vector now we need to loop through it and draw everything. So I just go down in here and just copy this enemy for loop. And paste in here this same that I had to type to particle. And the name will be will access it using particle variable. And then the vector is particles. And the same this particle enemy to particle and this one also. And let's try and let's check what uh, the result is right now. When we hit and there is a project type. But it is not getting its uh it is completely simple and it's not getting rewarded. We want the particles to be emitted when the projectile is shot by the player. Okay, I'll just copy this one. Uh, this will this be that. And the loop that we just created to add to the particles. Okay, I'll just copy that and go into the location where we are creating the projectile. And it's in this event. Then function. So I'll just paste it inside here. And then we need to make a lot of changes. We want 16 projectiles at a time and all of them should have the same velocity. And not the same velocity, it will be a factor of the velocity of the projectile. So that it's like, then be like a tail effect for the projectile. That's what we are going to do. And the random velocity, uh, we don't want this random velocity. I'll just remove this, all of this. We only need to loop through. And then the X will be the uh, x of x of the player which is window with divided by 2 because the projectile is coming from the player right so window with divided by 2 and then the x will be window height divided by 2 I mean the y will be window height divided by 2 the radius will be 3 itself so the color will be the color of the projectile which is white so I'll just pass in the projectile color variable uh, the array and then the random velocity x will not be random, it will be the velocity of the projectile. That is the velocity x. And then we need to divide it by i, uh, which is the index. Mm -hmm. So for the first one, it will be uh, velocity x divided by 0. And then we will again de uh, what, uh, divide it by 0 0.25. So then there is a tail effect. So when we, it will, what it will come like velocity x divided by i. And we are dividing everything by 0 0.25, which means velocity x divided by i into 0 0.25 will come. So for the first one, it will be 0, there will be a math error because we can divide it, dividing a number by 0. And then for the second one, there will be 1 into 0 0.25, velocity x into 4 will be the speed. So it will be going before the project goes, and then it will keep on increasing, and there will be like a tail effect. I will just copy this one, the velocity x, and then we just need to do the same thing for the velocity y. If we don't divide, it by the same amount, then the reaction will be different. We should divide it by the same amount, and only we will have a tail effect. And when we showed that there is like something like this, so we need to uh, we need to make some changes. That is, we want to uh, reduce the transparency of the uh, the projectile as time passes. So I'll do that, and then eventually, when it becomes zero, we need to remove them out of the vector, a particles vector. The otherwise the screen may get, the game may get laggy because of too much particles on the screen. Too much objects on the screen. So I'll do that. First we need to go to the particle.h and create new functions. And they have to return the alpha and also to change the alpha. So in here I'll just create one avoid function. And first I'll create an integer function which is a get alpha function which will return the alpha. Then we want a void function to set the alpha to a value that is varying remaining or incrementing somebody. And it will take in an argument d and for delta alpha. So uh, if we pass in a positive value in here, then it will add to the alpha. And if we pass in a negative value, it will subtract from alpha. Now we're going to particle order and create the implementation for those functions. Uh, one of them is uh, get uh, get alpha function. So in particular, get alpha, and then we need to return a, which is alpha. And then we have a void function, which is set alpha, and then we use a passing. Uh, the, the alpha 
we will we will be passing a negative value which will subtract and we will just add to the uh, alpha and the, the alpha because we will be we will be passing a negative value it will subtract from the alpha now we're going to the game.cpp itself because we need to remove the particles we need to keep track of the index so this for loop method will not work so i'll just copy this one this auto method auto ini change our method of for loop and just paste uh instead of this particle in the space and then change the enemy to particle and the enemy shall not enemy shall be enemy and the only particle so that and the particle is not equal to particles dot end it is a loop here now we need to um you see arrow method in here for drawing and also updating we need to subtract the alpha every uh, on every frame so particularly we call the set alpha function and we we'll just subtract it by one because this is even this is a bit faster it is the particle is getting moving fast even with this one if you try to give a much higher value then you can't even see the difference thing you know, it will not be visible at first itself because it gets the alpha gets to zero too fast we'll let's check if the alpha is smaller than or equal to zero so if particle don't get alpha is smaller than or equal to zero then we we'll just remove that particle Particle will be equal to particles so there is we are erasing from the particles vector and the particle that we are erasing is the particle itself. And then otherwise we'll just increment in increase the index that is plus plus particle, just like we did for the enemy and the projectile in their loops. Now when I show the projectile there is like a tail effect, much better look. And also there's particle effect when the uh collide when the projectile collide with the enemies. That means we have something, uh, we have implemented the particle effect also. Now everything regarding our game is done, but we need to render, we need to show the score and also we need a UI for the home, sc home screen and also whenever we, the collision between the enemy and the player happens, we want the game to stop. That's what we are going to do next. For that we need to render text and there is no facility for rendering text in the normal STL itself. So we need to download a library called STLTTF, which we'll download now. And then we'll go into this index of projects STLTTF release. And from that we can download whatever version we need. And then we'll go down and if you are using MinGW, uh, I mean Visual Studio Core, then you can download this one MinGW.R.GZ. And if you are using Visual Studio, just download this VC.zip. Now, now both of them is installed, so I'll just extract both. Now I have extracted both. I will just go into this Visual Studios one and we only need this include and lip. So just copy both of these and go to the location where the where all the other files are located and it's in SDN Visual Studio and just paste it in here. So merge both of those files. So include will be merged and also the lip. So in the 64 bit there is this SDN underscore SDN2 underscore TTF which we will be using. Now for Visual Studio Code, okay, now I, I no longer need this VC1 folder, so I just delete that. In JW, I'll just copy all and this one is for 64 bit, this one is for 32 bit, I'll just copy the 64 bits. And then in the bin, there is this STL, SDL to underscore TTF to DLL, so just copy that. And for now, I'll just paste in here. Now we need this include lib and also this STL TTF DLL files, so just copy all of those. And go to the project location. And in the project location, you have to merge the include and lib files and also you have to put the DLL file in the root where you have put the STL to DLL and just combine it as usual. Just go into the build, I mean the project and into the project and shooter properties. And then because the include folder is the same, we need to change that. We only need to add one more file for the input, the linker input. So in the linker input, add a new one, which will be STL2, STL2 underscore TTF dot lib. So this the, this is the file that we need and with this our project setup is but we need to install a font and also set it up in the Visual Studio free TTF fonts and then we have a website called 1001 free fonts just go into that and we can download whichever one we want this one I'll just install it whichever one you can download go into the location where it is downloaded and we only need this regular one or you can Use the bond one also. I'll just use this regular one, and I'm just I just want that file. I will just uh, drag this one into the resource files folder. 
Now the setup is done. We'll get into writing the code required for rendering the score text. First, I will go into the game.h and we'll need to import the STL TTF. Hashing include STL underscore TTF. And then we'll create the, we'll need to create three variables. One is the font variable, which is of a data type that is provided by the TTF, which is TTF font. Then we have a rectangle. It is for the location, for setting the location of where the score text should be. And there will be also a variable for the score. So it all then will be private variables, so we'll create them. One is the TTF font pointer, which will represent the font of the uh, text that we are using. And then for that, we download on this one, this mm, Monserrat regular font. So we'll be setting that to that font, that variable. Then as we need the STL rect for the rectangle, which will be used for the location of the, uh, the text. And we'll just name it score text dest which is for the destination now there will be another variable which is the score and it will be an integer we just set it to zero and we'll be increasing the score whenever the projectile hits on the enemy now we'll go into the uh, main game constructor and we need to initialize the stl ttf in here so under this stl init i'll just create an if statement so we are checking for the error also right now itself so if ttf underscore init, if it's not equal to zero, that is if it failed, we'll just print out that uh, it failed, we failed to initialize stl ttf. Failed to initialize stl ttf. And then, okay, we need not end delay. Now that initialization is done, but we also need to, we need to open a font. So I, in here, I'll just go down and in here I will do that. We have already created a ttf font variable font, variable and tool, we'll set it to the we are going to open a font using ttf open ttf open font function and then we need to pass in the location of the font and because we put it in the resource files it will already uh, the visual studio will look for that so we just need to pass in the name of the file routine the next argument is the size so it is a point size or the so we'll just pass in 30 it's the size of the font now we will check for the error if not font that is if font is not created or if it doesn't exist then we'll just print out failed to open font okay now we have this now we'll go into the run function and into the while loop main while loop i'll just go down and go down into the location where we check for the collision between the enemy and the projectile so i think it's this one if resistance square is more than resistance square and we need to increase the score by 10 if the enemy and the projectile collide so we will increase the score by 10 so score plus or equals to 10 now under this we will create the uh, create the text and all so in here i will just do that so we need to access the score text destination uh, rectangle and we will set the x value to 10 so it, the x will be 10 pixels the x position then y will also be 10 and the width will be 200 pixels and height will be 50 pixels so uh, w stands for the width and it will be 200 and then we have the height also which i just set it to 50 pixels now we need we need a we need an array to store the color so sdl uh, the variable i mean the data type let's set it to sdl color and then text color will be the name of the variable and it will be an array of three items r g and b alpha is not needed so I'll just set it to white color so everything will be 255. Now we need the string to be uh, rendered by the TTF2. That is the string that the value of the text that we want to print, we want to show. And it will be score and then the integer value of the score. But in order to render that, we need to convert it to string value. So the data type will be std string and it will be the name will be score text because we are going to render the score. And then I'll just first put a string in here, score and then the value of the integer. So we will convert the integer to string and then only we will be rendering it, then only we can do that. So we are going to use std to score function to, I mean to, uh, I mean to string to convert it to, we we'll use the to string function to convert the value to string and then we need to pass in the score variable which is an integer. Uh, to do that we need to first uh, include one more library which is the string library ok 
Now we need to create a surface on which the uh, text will be rendered. So, so it will be of the data type STL surface pointer. And then just name it text surface. And I will set it to. And it will be, we are going to render a solid text. That is, it will be completely filled. The text will be completely filled. So STL TTF underscore render text solid to completely fill it and then we need to pass in the font which is the font it's font variable itself and we have the text and it is of the data type const character pointer so we need to convert the string to constant character pointer how to do that just first access the variable which is the score text and to convert that just use c underscore string so we are converting into const character pointer and there is the color which is of the data type stl color it will be the text color variable so now we have I created the surface and we need to check for the error if there is any error in the creation of the surface. So if not text surface, then we will just print out failure to render text. And then we need to create a texture also using our surface, then only we can render it. So SDL texture will be the data type and it will be pointer itself. Text texture will just name the variable text texture. And we are going to create an SDL texture. I still create texture from a surface from the surface that we just created and obviously we need to pass in the renderer because we are going to render it onto the screen and then the surface is the data type which is the text surface variable is our surface so text surface in this hour we have created the texture also now first we'll stl underscore free surface to serve to add this removing everything from the surface and then we need to pass in the surface which is the text surface and then we will render it using SDL render copy and the first argument is the renderer itself then we have the texture which will be the text to texture variable then we have the SDL rect which is the null this which will be null and then we this one is not the one that we use for the destination it is for the SRC rest, rest, rect the next one is the destination rect which is our which is a pointer to our score text rect uh, destination rect so the rectangle that we use for the location and the attributes of the score so it will be a reference not a pointer reference and okay, now that one is done now we every, i think the score will be rendered let's try it out okay now there is an error which is sdl2 underscore ttf dot dll was not found so we have to make a small change we have to go into the file explorer and we have a file called sdl2 underscore ttf in the lib folder which we downloaded so we need to just copy that and go into our project location and what we'll do is we'll go into the x64 into the debug folder and in here we'll just need to paste the dll file now with this our i think it will be working let's try it out but it is showing failed to render text okay what we can do is we'll go into the again the location where we downloaded our phone to just copy the font and go into the location of our project and just place in the root of the project now let's try it out now we have the score in here let's try to hit one and when it hit is the score is getting increased which means our score is score rendering is done you can see the text in uh, the uh, value of the score increases whenever we hit now we have the score also set up the next step is creating the ui and is there will be two states one will be game over state and one will be the playing state in the playing state only the updation of the game will happen see others in the other one that is the game over state there will only be a home screen in which it will be shown click to play a game so that's what we are going to be implementing next so first we will go into the game.h and create a new boolean variable playing and as default i'll just set it to true for now so when this condition this variable is set to true then the game is uh, playing otherwise it is game over now I'll just go into the game.cpp and in, inside the event where we create the projectile. So if playing only we want to create a projectile, otherwise if the playing is false, then when we click on the left mouse button, we want the variable to set to to, uh, to be set to true. And also the game should restart. So how to do that? Inside inside this checking for this SL button left event, I'll just create a condition if playing. And if playing only we'll just do we'll do all of this projectile generation so i'll just cut this and paste it inside this loop now we want an else also that is if the playing is false then what we'll do we'll just set the playing to true but before that we need to set the score to zero because we are restarting the game the score will be equal to zero 
and then we want all the enemies and the projectiles should be removed off the screen. So how to do that? Just remove everything from the enemies and the projectiles vector because we are drawing it by looping through the vector. So how to clear everything? Just call the clear function on the vectors. So in the name of the vector will be enemies and then we'll just call the clear function on it. And then we have the projectiles vector also called the clear on it to remove every items of the vector. Now we need to set the playing variable to true. And the order is very important. You should only set this to true after both of these happen. Otherwise, if the enemy uh, is colliding with the player, then we, when we click on the left mouse button again and again, the enemy will be again and again colliding with the player, which means the playing will not be permanently set to true. So that's why we are uh, doing this playing is still true last. Now we want uh, we want to uh, we want to draw the players and everything only if the playing is true. So we'll just put everything inside of this in the condition. So when we just go down and we have something like this. But this should be done uh, even when the playing is false. This is to update the window. So instead to make everything together into one if statement, I'll just cut this or uh, from this image and resin everything. Uh, outside of this, everything also of this loop, control X. And I'll just go down and paste it on top of this draw function, draw functions. And then we'll just make uh, put everything inside this if statement. So in here, just create a new condition if playing. Then only we need to draw everything, draw all this. I'll just uh, we'll just tap to, and we should go until this SDL render copy until we are rendering the text. Just tap and put the closing bracket in here. Now let's check. Okay, now let's check what the result is. Now the enemies are coming. We can hit them. Let's wait for the enemy to collide. And when it is colliding, uh, nothing else happens. That's because we are setting the running variable to true. We haven't made any uh, any changes to set the playing variable to false. So we'll just go in here. And we are we, uh, when the enemy and the player collides, we want the playing variable to be set to true, not the running variable. So we just set the playing is equal to false. And I'll just run it again. Let's wait for the enemy to collide. And when the enemy is colliding, nothing is happening. It's because we haven't yet set the else statement, so we'll just do that now. As default, we'll set the uh, boolean uh, playing variable to false. And then when we click on the left mouse button, then it will be set to true. Let's try if that works. So nothing is up, nothing is shown on the screen, which means playing is false. Then I, when I click on the left mouse button, the game starts. Now we just need to create the else statement for this uh, main uh, game loop panel. So else, that is, it is the else for the if playing condition. Else, there will be a play, there will be a text that says, that says a click to play and there will also be, we will also be rendering the score in there. So I'll just go into the game.h and create a new variable in here and it will be an SDL rectangle. So I'll just create it in here, SDL rect. Then it will be the play text test that is it will be the uh, button that i mean it will be the text that shows play so this i'm just naming it play test list now we need to set its x y width and height so i'll just do that now i'll just access that uh destination rectangle and set the x to window width divided by 2 minus 200 because we will be setting the width to 400 if we subtract 200 uh, from the window width by 2 only, it will be exactly in the center. And we want the y also play test test dot y. And it will be equal to window height divided by 2 plus 50. Because I'm going to show the score on top of the play button and the play text. Now there will be a width which will be 400 as I already told. W it will be 400 pixels. Then we want the height which will be 100 pixels. Then I'll just create an STL color variable and it will be white color. And it will be equal to RGB to all of all the three RG and B255 which is, which is white color. Then we want a, a string to store the, to store the text to be rendered. 
We are not going to create any variable for the separate variable because it's just going to be a string and we are not going to combine any integers just like we did for the score and all. So I'll just create an SDN surface. It will be a pointer and I'll just name it play text surface because it's going to render the play again and the play text. Then we are going to use the TTF render text render text solid function to render a completely filled text and then the first argument is the font itself font variable then we have the text which will be click to play and the color also which will be the white color so we are going to give it a white color then if not play if the play text surface is not created or if it is equal to your pointer and all then we will just print out field to render text and then we need to create a texture i'll just go on top and just copy everything from here copy everything and then just paste i'll just change this one okay we have already created the texture so we no longer need that i mean the surface now I'll just change this to plain text texture and then the surface will be plain text surface and in here also we are going to free the play text surface and the text texture will be play text texture and we also want those okay and then the rectangle will not be the score text texture it will be the play text destination rectangle i'll just copy this again for the other one which will be we are going to render the score also in a bigger bigger uh with a bigger size so I'll just copy everything related to the uh, score text that we did earlier and just I'll just paste it in under this one in the if not play condition and then we need to change the location zone location of the uh, where it will be shown it should be in the center of the screen so the x will be equal to window width by 2 minus 100 so the width will be uh, 200 that's why I'm subtracting 200 from it to give it a look that it is in the center itself the window height, the height, uh, the y will be window height by 2, the center of the screen, minus 50 pixels. Then the width and the height, width will be 200, but the height will be a bit more, which will be 100. Okay, let's try to run this and check if there is any problem. The click to play, showing click to play. And again, let's wait for to collide. Wait for the enemies to collide with us. And now there is a problem. Figure out what the problem is. It's in this when we uh, when we are checking for the collision between the player and the enemy. We are if the collision happens, we are not uh, incrementing the value of the enemy. That's what the problem is. We want to whatever the case, even if it's colliding, we need to uh, add it. That is plus plus enemy. We need to increment it. And when we now just try it out. Now everything is. I think everything will work fine. Let's wait for it to collide. When collision happens, we are going to the home screen itself, which means everything is working fine. Now almost everything related to the game is done. We just need to make some minor changes. One of them will be the, with the projectiles particles. Now I'm just going to create one projectile. And when it is created, there are many particles that go before the projectile. We only want the particles to go after the projectile. So that's what we are going to be making. And it doesn't require much code, just a one line of code. It will be an if statement. So if if the uh, velocity of the uh, particle is smaller than the velocity of the projectile only, then only we want the the uh, particles to be shown. But what about the negative velocity? If the projectile is going to the left, then we know that the velocity will be negative. So we are going to take the absolute value of this. That is absolute will be the positive value of that negative number. If for example the velocity is minus 5 then the its post absolute value is 5. So we are going to check it by uh, creative statement based on the absolute value. Because we have already imported the CMAP library we can use it. Now we are going to check an if statement then we use the absolute function and then what we need to check we need to check the value of this one. That is the uh, value of the that is the velocity x of the projectile. So if std absolute if it is smaller than the velocity of the projectile which is the velocity x again the absolute value of the velocity x because this velocity x can also be negative now this is then only in the x direction now we want to check for the y direction also so just create two and two and signs and then we are going to do it for the 
y axis also std absolute of the same thing but for velocity y this is copy the velocity y of the particle and just paste it in here now we have that also but we need to check for the condition if it is smaller than the absolute value of the okay, there's a small problem it should be std absolute because we are not using any names namespace as std and here also std absolute of velocity y velocity y now that is done let's try and check if the projectile is has become better and when we hit the projectiles are always on the back of the player whatever direction we are hitting it on so that means that problem is fixed and the next thing is the different speed of the enemy generation based on the number of enemies on the screen i have said it in the demo of the project so we need to make uh we need to implement that now now under the under the code where we generate the enemy i'll just check for the number of items in the enemy's vector so if enemies dot size if size is the function that we use to check the length of the vector if it is smaller than or equal to three that is if there are only uh, three or less number of enemies on the screen then we want to generate the two enemies in per second so we just set the enemy generation interval to 0 0.5 second or 500 millisecond now else if otherwise this is this will be the medium speed which will be the uh, default thousand seconds if the enemy size is between three and seven so enemies dot size is greater than three and enemies dot size is smaller than seven so if it is either four five or six then we'll just set the enemy generation interval to one second itself thousand which is thousand millisecond now otherwise if uh, there are more enemies more than seven enemies on the screen uh, seven or more enemies on the screen then we'll just set it to 1.5 seconds so in three seconds only two enemies will be generated so if enemies dot size is greater than or equal to seven then i'll just set the variable to 1500 millisecond which is 1.5 seconds now with this we can't see much changes but we can feel it while playing now uh, it's coming a bit faster and when i'll just wait for so many enemies to come and now it is getting slower the enemy generation is getting slower I'll just remove every enemy on the screen and show. And whenever the number of enemies on the screen is decreasing, the generation of the enemy speed is increasing. Which means that one is also working fine and which means the game is complete. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe and I'll be back with another video soon.